coming to you live, or not live, from the Black Goat 39 Studios East. This is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Now here's your host, the Guru of Sports. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I see it. I see it. <laughs> this is funny. I see. I see what you're doing. But I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sports fans, and welcome. Welcome to episode 98 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports. And yeah, I know. I haven't been back on here since January. I, I know. Back since January the 22nd of this great year of 2020. Um, I'm here today. I know it's February the 5th, uh, 2022. And I want to say thank you. Thank you and welcome me back. I know it's been rough. It's been rough. But hey, you know what? This is the thing. Doing the rough things make you better. And um, I really appreciate the love and support that I got while I was uh, while I was out while I was away. Um, first of all, I gotta tell you what happened to me. Okay. Now, last week I was supposed to come back for uh, championship weekend and talk about the uh, the things that was going on from the divisional week, and um, you know, talk about championship week. You know, Kansas City and Cincinnati, uh, San Francisco and the Los Angeles Rams. I didn't get a chance to do that because uh, I got caught in a snowstorm. Yeah. If you guys remember that big snowstorm that we had, and I was supposed to, I made my normal run up to uh, Boston and I was trying to get back before. Uh, it started to get really, really bad. But what happened was I um, I um, usually, you know, I kind of stay at this one spot in Connecticut. And I tried to make that move to get back before it every, every you know, before it started snowing really bad. And next thing you know, um, I had a little bit of a truck problem. And it snowed me in. So... I had to get a new new tractor, and you know it, it was it was just it was wild. But you know what? I really, you know, I I gotta say this. I work for some very very incredible people that was work you know worried about me as an as a as a not just as an employee. They were worried about me as a person, and you know I really appreciate the fact that I can come on this microphone right now and I can tell you that I have never in my life have worked for a great organization that I work for right now. I'm not going to tell you the name of the organization because the thing about it is that my, you know, there's certain things. My Private life is private. My work life is private. And my family life is private. You know, I, I look at it this way. I share some things with you that I can share with you. And I just want to say, I really give 
big props and a thank you out to the organization I work for and the people that I work with. Um, I'm going to mention one man, and um, he's one of the greatest people I've ever met. And not just saying this because, you know, he helps me out. But the thing about it is that I build relationship with people. And, you know, I got a few other things I'm going to be talking about. But I want to tell you that one of the greatest guys I've ever worked with is my man, Mr. David Jones. Now, every time I say David Jones, I think of David Bowie. And that's, you know, <laughs> I, I kind of, he doesn't know it. But I kind of nicknamed him David Bowie. Because the thing about it is that, you know, David Bowie meant a whole lot in my life. And he was a very, very big, influential thing in my life. David Bowie meant a lot to me. Um, you know, I, I know everybody talks about their idols, their people that they they think about, and, you know, people that, you know, made an impact on their life. David Bowie did because of his music and, and the things that, you know, you know, he, he was a great guy, great guy, and I really respect him. And David Jones is another guy that I really like. I really, really am a very, very, you know, I, I really appreciate and I respect because he goes out of his way to help me and anyone that goes out of their way to help me means a lot to me. You know, there's another guy that I work with as well. His name is Adam, Adam Pippen. And I really appreciate him because he's very quiet, very private. But the thing about it is that he'll always take the time out. To help me out. And that means a lot to me. And I really appreciate. Both Adam and David. For their support. You know when I first started this. Position. That I have. And I drive. With truck drivers. I didn't know a whole lot. I mean I, kn I thought I knew a lot. But. These guys helped me out to put me in the fold and make me feel comfortable. Now, I've, I've worked for a lot of different organizations, and I think I finally found a home with the organization I'm with right now. But I want to tell you that Adam, David, and, um, my gosh, I can't, I, I'm going to get killed because, uh, He's another guy that, you know, really, really helped me out. I really appreciate people coming to me and, you know, making friends with me and helping me out. You know, there's there's a whole lot of guys. Keith, uh, there's uh, Luis, uh, there's a lot of guys. I'm sorry if I missed anybody, but the thing about it is that I want you guys to know that I'm very much a part of a family now that that took me in and gave me an opportunity. And, you know, all I wanted when I wasn't, uh, when I was looking for a new position was just a, a place that can take me in and make me feel comfortable and make me feel like, hey, I'm important that I can go out there and do the job. And they have, you know, and I really you just don't know. My family appreciates me. I really appreciate it. From the bottom of my heart, I really, really appreciate everything that they have done to make me feel like I'm family. And they treat me with respect, and I respect them. I will go to the highest mountain and shout out them because they made me feel as though that, hey, you're part of family. We're going to take care of you. We're going to make you feel as like you you should have been here a long time ago. And I feel like that, too. You know, I don't know how many more years I got left to work, you know.
But the thing about it is that I'm in an organization right now that I feel as though that I can do the right things. And believe me, I bust, excuse the expression, I bust my ass to make sure that I do the job right. And these guys that I mentioned, all these guys have came to me and helped me, made sure that I can do the job right. And, you know, I really appreciate that. I just wanted to, you know, make that little statement because, you know, yeah, it was kind of weird that, you know, I wasn't home. I got home on Sunday, right before the halftime of the uh, AFC Championship. But the thing about it is that I didn't mind being out there because I was doing a job. And I made sure that I wanted to make, you know, my best effort put forth my best effort to make sure that the company that I work for sees that I'm trying to make a difference and trying to help and trying to be in the fold and be on time and be on the page where they needed me to be. And I really appreciate them. You know, you know, I, I don't know a lot about what's, you know, you know, Things out there right now is just really weird. The pandemic has really, really messed us up. Really messed us up. You know, but the thing about it is that people out there, some people out there don't want to work. And you know what? What the fuck are you thinking about? Excuse the expression. You don't want to work? When there's work out there that is available? you rather sit home and just do nothing and sit on a couch and watch TV. I can't do that. You know, I, I have a level of respect for myself and for my family and for, you know, the people that I'm obligated to, to do something with my life, you know? Now, if you hear the hum in the background, that's my heater. Okay, my heater has been coming on and off. I've been trying to keep it quiet, but you know what? I need the heater this morning because it's cold as hell out there but you know going back to what i was saying is that hey you don't want to work that's on you and you know and you don't want the opportunity to get out there that's on you i can't make you work you got to work you got to do it on your own but the thing about it is that i choose to work i choose to work you know and i'm I don't know. I might work until I'm about like 67, 68. I don't know. Hopefully, I, if you know God spares me and gives me more lifetime on this earth, I'm going to try to work until I'm about 70. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Because the thing about it is that I like doing what I'm doing. And to tell you the truth, it doesn't even seem like I'm doing any work. I'm basically traveling around, looking at things, and you know, enjoying myself, playing my music, listening to all kinds of stuff, you know, podcasts and everything. I mean, this is an opportunity. And for me personally, I like doing it. I love doing it. And I love the people that I work with. I mean, they, I say it again, they make me feel like I'm family and I'm at home. So... You know, I, I wanted to make sure that I got that out there because, you know, I was supposed to be back last week and I took the week off because of the snowstorm and everything. But, you know, my family wanted, wanted me to spend some time with them and I did. You know, I didn't get a chance to because, you know, my normal routine, I, I usually have a one day turnaround and it turned into like almost three but you know what? That's that's the thing. You know, when family calls, family needs you, you go with them. You go with them. You know? And I really appreciate everything that, you know, my family, my, my company that I work with and I work for, that they take, you know, they make sure that we're, we're, we're all good. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I really... I love, I love my, my supervisors. I love my dispatcher. I love, you know, the people that help me out. And I really appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, 
I'm flying solo today. Um, Cousin Aaron is a little bit under the weather, and I wanted to make sure that I give him a shout out and I say to him, um, get well, get well soon. And um, hopefully he'll be back here with me next Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning is Super Bowl Sunday. And we're going to break down what we saw and what we, you know, what we did and what's going on and everything. All right. Well, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this short and sweet. And uh, I'm going to mention a few things that uh, came across while I wasn't, uh, while I wasn't here. And I want to make sure that I uh, get a few things in. I'm definitely going to talk about Brian Flores and um, the situation that he's uh, he's dealing with. I'm going to talk about the Washington Commanders and their new name change. And um, I'm going to mention how it got leaked. <laughs> and um, I got to give credit where credit is due. I got to give a shout out to uh, a friend, of, a friend of mine. I never met him, but he is a friend of mine. I consider him a friend, and um, I got to talk about that. You know, with the Washington Commanders, you got to talk about Dan Snyder. You got to talk about Joe Theismann, um, all that. And you know, the Saturday that last week, we heard the breaking news of Tom Brady decided that he wanted to retire. The, you know, all that came out when I was up in the snowstorm. <laughs> so I really couldn't, uh, you know, comment on anything. But I am going to mention a little bit about Tom Brady. Uh, I'm going to finish it up with a little bit of thoughts on baseball. And baseball is just, I don't know. And I got taps also. I got to pay tribute to Mr. Howard Hessman, um, who we lost last Sunday. I, f I heard the news on Sunday, just as uh, the Cincinnati Bengals was wrapping up the uh, AFC title. Um, we're going to talk about him a little bit, and I'm going to run down some of the television shows that he was in. Um, his film... Film, de uh, film debut was like in 1966, um, and he finished up his film career in 2018. But I'm going to talk about the television shows that he was a part of. And I know that some of you younger people out there are going to talk about, oh man, I don't remember this show. I don't remember this show. But I got a couple shows that you might remember. And we're going to talk about, we're going to get into Mr. Howard Hesman. Okay, I'm not going to be doing, uh, I'm not going to be doing Buster, well, Buster Facts. I'm not going to be doing a lot of stuff. I'm just going to give you a brief edition of the Guru Talking Sports today. Only because, like I said, there was a few things that I wanted to get out there. There was a few things I saw, uh, seen when I was out there during the snowstorm, and I do want to refresh a few things that uh, was on my mind, and um, like I said, I'm, I'm a flying solo, my cousin Aaron, um, I want to, you know, give him a shout out and let him know that we're, we're thinking about him here on the, uh, the podcast, and I want you guys to know that, you know, hey, you guys pray for cousin Aaron, make sure that you get your prayers in for cousin Aaron, make sure that you know, you think about, you know, Cousin Aaron and me too, the guru, because we, you know, we, we really appreciate you listening. And as much as I tell you guys all the, all the time, when I crack open this microphone, when I talk to you guys, I want you guys to know that, hey, what I'm coming from, I'm coming from the heart. And I really appreciate you taking the time picking up this podcast, listening to what we have to say, making your opinions, you know, interacting with us. If you see something wrong, let me know. If you see something that you agree with, let me know. But the thing about it is that I want you guys to remember, 
the people that listen to this podcast is more important to me than me doing this podcast. If you get get my drift. You're important. I'm just here, just filling a seat, just doing what I usually do. The important thing is that I get information out to you guys that you guys can take and listen to. You guys out there make me. I'm just, you know, I don't take any credit for anything. You know, the guru is always right. But the thing about it is that I don't take any credit for anything. I want the credit to go to, you know, Cousin Aaron when he's here. I want the credit to go to everybody out there for listening. And, you know, just, you know, giving a giving a uh, uh, an ear full to what we have to, you know, mention to you. We care about you. We appreciate you. And we thank you. And we give you big props for sticking with us. You know, I actually been uh, offered to uh, uh, join another platform because this podcast has been a little bit, uh, it's been getting a little bit of notice here lately. So I want to say thank you for the notice, the notoriety and being noticed. You know, it helps. But, you know, we, pro- we we go out to a lot of different uh, avenues. We've got over 150 apps that we're on, and we're growing. We're growing, and I really appreciate that. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a break right here. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to talk about Brian Flores. And um, like I said, I, this is going to be short and sweet. I know, I've been talking over 20 minutes now, but I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll get into the uh, Brian Flores uh, situation. Guru Talk of Sports Podcast, we'll be right back. Just hang in there with us. We'll be right back after this. All right, guys, welcome back to the Guru Talk of Sports Podcast. This is episode 98, and... um. I thought I didn't want it, but um, I actually went out and got me another uh, cup of uh, coffee. Like I say, if you hear that in the background, that's my uh, heater going off. And um, it's kind of cold out here today. So I want to make sure that, uh, you know, Guru got to stay warm, got to stay comfortable, and got to be, you know, you know got to be taken care of when he has to, you know. Like I said, I want to mention this before I um, go into my thoughts about Brian Flores. I want to say thank you to my company for looking out for my safety and my well-being. And, you know, I love them and I really appreciate them. Okay. Let's get into it. Now, you know, I thought Tom Brady's uh, retirement was going to be the biggest story. And uh, we was going to give a big love fest to uh, Tom Brady. And his co- contributions and his, uh, you know, accolades and everything. But um, that was overshadowed. I think it was, it came out on the uh, 1st of February, which was like a four, day, four days ago, that uh, Brian Flores uh, filed a uh, suit against the NFL for uh, uh, racial injustice, I guess. I don't, you know, I, I've definitely, I've heard a lot about it. But, you know, I, I want to mention this. I want to say this, you know. I understand his point of view. I understand his point of view. Now, I don't think that some of the, some of the things in here is going to, you know, it's going to go go about. But if you can look at the NFL right now, take a look. There's only one African American head coach. Yeah, we we know Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh. 
And why is there only one African American head coach? Because I gotta mention this, and I'm being honest. And like I said, this is a, this is a subject that we're gonna have to talk about. But then again, I'm gonna put it in my perspective. And if you get any, if I get anything wrong, come back to me and let me know. All right, we're gonna talk about this. We gotta sit down and talk about. This. Now, he made claims against the uh, Dolphins, the Giants, and the Broncos. Okay. From what I heard, that uh, the Broncos, you know, showed up late. John Elway and another uh, employee of the Broncos showed up late. They looked dis disheveled, and they looked like they were drunk. Okay. You have to, you know, that's a, that's a tall order. You know, John Elway... I never liked him because, well, I never liked him because he ditched the Baltimore Colts. Now, I'm a Baltimore uh, native, and, you know, turn a blind eye on Baltimore is not a good thing for me. But I look at it this way. His accomplishments in the NFL is, you know, he's been a very, very great, he was a great, you know, great Hall of Fame quarterback. But I'm going to tell you like this, he sucks as a, a, a what it does, what he does in the front office. He hasn't even, the only quarterback that he picked that was good for his organization was uh, Peyton Man. All right. But they, he said that they looked disheveled. They looked like they were drunk. You know, those are, those are claims that he has to prove. You know, I understand that. That's, that's stuff that he has to prove. Okay. The Giants, he said that the, uh, well, you guys know about the Giants situation. He said that that was like a sham interview because of uh, the text that he got from Bill Belichick. And I know that, you know, you've heard all the stories. And I'm not going to re go re rehash all that stuff. But the thing about it is that, you know, the Giants said that they had a, you know, they had stuff there that for him to interview. All right, now, that, like I said, that's something he has to prove. The Dolphins, he's accusing them of uh, his owner, Stephen Ross, of saying, hey, give me, I'm going to give you $100,000 for every loss. You know, and then Hugh Jackson came out, said something about the Cleveland Browns did the same thing. I understand that. Believe me, I understand that. But. These are stuff, this is stuff that has to be proven. If you accuse someone of doing something, you got to prove it. And like I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Brian Flores is wrong for doing this, but you know what? He's at, he has to prove this stuff, you know, and if it's, if it's true, he's, he's right. If it's not true, then, you know, he's just probably, you know, I don't know. He's just. I don't know. I can't really speak for Brian Flores because, like I said, I don't know. I'm not, I haven't been what I haven't been in his shoes. I can't really understand that. But I do understand the fact that yes, there is only one African American head coach right now, and there's one Hispanic. Well, Ron Rivera, you know, my you know minority uh, uh coach. And there's 32 teams. I understand that. You know, I don't know. I don't know any of the owners in the NFL. Okay. But I got to look at, I got to say this, and this is my thing. You know, you're going to go with somebody that you're really familiar with. Now, everybody wants to have the, uh, the new Sean McVay, uh, young offensive coordinator type. You know, I understand that. You know, winning is winning. That's what you want to do. You want to win. Okay? Now, a couple episodes ago, me and Cousin Aaron was talking about this. And the thing about it is that, yeah, he was right in the fact that, you know, the NFL – has a very big problem with hiring African-American coaches.
for, you know, management and, you know, head coaching jobs. I agree. Look at it. The facts are the facts. The facts are the facts. There's only one African-American head coach. And there's one Hispanic, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, Hispanic head coach. But the thing about it is that they are going to choose who they feel comfortable with. I understand that. But, you know, look at it this way. Some of these guys I have never even heard of. Brian Eberflus or whatever. I've never heard of some of these people. Yeah, Byron left, which was considered for the Jacksonville job. I understand that. Doug Peterson got that job because, well, uh, you know, he might have been like, well, Jacksonville probably said, well, you know what? Uh, I guess we'll hire Doug Peterson. He interviewed first and, you know, we went through all these other options. Yeah, I would have liked to see, you know, Byron Leftwich in Jacksonville. But the thing about it is that a lot of them, even Doug Peterson, was kind of reluctant to take the job because of Trent Belkey. Now, if, you, if you're if you following me on this, coaches want to go to situations where they have a relationship with their general manager. Now, Byron Leftwich didn't want to deal with Trent Belkey. And he told Shot Khan, hey, look, I'll coach this team, maybe, if you get rid of Balky. Shot Khan didn't want to get rid of Balky. I don't know what Shot Khan and Balky got together. I don't know. But it's not my it's not it's not my fault. It's not Byron Leftwich's fault that he didn't take that job. He didn't want it because of the general manager. Yeah, that could have been us, you know, two. African-American coaches. I understand that. But the thing about it is that right now, I'm going to ask you a question. What would you rather be? Head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars where you got, you know, a very subpar roster and you want to deal with that? I mean, I look at it this way. Trent or uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be a superstar. I got to give it to him. He's going to be a superstar. But the thing about it is that you want to deal with trying to turn an organization all the way around? Or do you want to stay with Tampa Bay where you got a championship caliber team? And I know that they didn't win the championship this year, but, you know, they got a championship caliber team. And maybe when Bruce Arians steps away, you can be promoted to head coach that way. The choice is yours. But then it, you look at it. Look at the look at what I just explained to you guys. I mean, if I'm Byron Leftwich, I'm going to stay in Tampa Bay. Because yeah, Jacksonville was my home. I played for them. Yes, and all that, all that, whatever. Good guy. Yeah, whatever. But the thing about it is that I want to stay where I know I can win. A lot of guys want to stay where they know they can win. And that's why I don't have a problem with Byron Leftwich staying in Tampa Bay. I understand why he did that. Because he wants to stay in Tampa Bay. Because he knows that he can win in Tampa Bay. He can't really win in Jacksonville. Right now, he's got to do a lot of research and he's got to turn this whole freaking team around. So, you know, I look at it this way. You got to give it to Byron Leftwich. I would like to see him be, you know, and, you know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of different things, you know. Jacksonville kind of did him a little dirty before he left there, yeah. But you know what? I look at it this way. He's going to go where he's going to go. He's going to stay where he's going to be comfortable. 
All right. Now. We have, I mean, you know, look at it this way. 57% of the NFL is African-American. Two minority coaches. Yeah, this is a travesty. It's not right. You know, like I said, I, I didn't, I thought that Jim Caldwell was the best candidate to take the Jacksonville job. I would have been really, really satisfied with uh, Jim Caldwell. Now, he's a uh, he's a good coach. You know, he did something that, you know, Lions fans can agree with. He actually turned the Lions around and, you know, got them to the playoffs. I got to give it to him. I love Jim Caldwell. I think he's a great coach. But they went with Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson is a Super Bowl winning coach. I know that he didn't really pan out in Philadelphia. You know, he's got a statue in front of Philadelphia with, you know, him and Nick Foles and all that. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, wasn't my first choice, but you got to give it up. You got to give it up. Jacksonville did what they felt as though that they needed to do. And they picked a coach that has a Super Bowl ring. I don't think they picked him because he was white. I think they picked him because they felt as though that he does have some kind of stability that he can bring to the organization. And he knows that it's going to be a turnaround. Okay? Like I said, you know, it, it, you know, we can't, we can't argue some of these facts because, you know, the, the ownership, owners are going to pick who they want. You know, we have the Rooney Rule in effect, but the Rooney Rule needs some overhauling, as we could say. Needs some fixing. Definitely needs some fixing. And, you know, I understand the situation with hiring African-American coaches for, you know, general manager and head coaching jobs. But it's got to be fixed. The system is broken. It's got to be fixed. That's why Brian Flores feels as though that he needed to come out and do what he did. I applaud him. Not just because I'm African American, but I applaud him for seeing a disservice and an injustice to the system. The system is really, really messed up. So I got to give him big props for doing what he did. It's not just because of a black thing or a white thing. He wants it to be equal. And folks, if you're listening to me right now, I'm telling you, everything in this world has to be equal. It's not about black and white. Just make the playing field level. Make, make it equal for everyone. You know, I would like to see a female be a head coach. I would like to see a female be president. I would like to see a, you know, whatever. I, I mean... Equal, make it equal, make it equal, make it equal. That's all I'm asking for. All right. I'm going to go to the next subject I want to talk about, and that's the Washington Commanders. Washington got a brand new name, and, you know, I got to give it up for uh, my man. I have never mentioned his name on this podcast until now. I got to give it up for him because uh, 
the other day. I listen to his program every single day. I am a loyal, loyal listener to his program. And um, his show on CBS Sports Radio is probably the long. It's actually the longest running uh, show on CBS Sports Radio. And we're talking about Mr. Damon Amendaloria. I really appreciate you, D.A. Love you, my brother. You know I love you, bro. And I I am a loyal listener. I have, lo- I have been... I actually caught the program back in uh, 2015 when he was doing overnights. And I used to hear... I used to catch him a little bit at the end where he was giving out... Uh, you know, people were just calling in and, you know find out where they were, what they were doing and everything. And I thought it was pretty cool. Um, kind of got away from the program a little bit because of my work schedule and all. And kind of got back to it when I was uh, driving around and working for another company. And I really enjoy, I mean, it's, it's, it's the best show. It's, it's a Hall of Fame show. And, and you guys... You got to listen to it. It's on CBS Sports Radio from 6 a.m. to uh, 10 a.m. in the East. And I really appreciate you, D.A., because uh, he's he's the man. I mean, I, I look at it this way. I, I've met Jim Rome before, you know, has, you know, spoke to Jim Rome. But um, I got a chance to meet um, one of his, uh, one of uh, D.A.'s crew members. Uh, Mr. Andrew Bogish, and um, I, I am very, very much, uh, very appreciative and very thankful for uh, his time that we spent together with me and my son, uh, Caden Guru, and uh, we we really, really appreciate you, Andrew. We think that we thank the world of you, and um, it was just. Uh, amazing just to be in his presence and just just speak with him um we're hopefully uh da and uh, andrew will be down in baltimore maybe uh later on this year and i definitely got a chance i want to definitely meet the crew um uh i want to definitely meet all of them and they're really really great guys but um like I said the other day on his, his program, um, he had uh, Joe Theismann on. And Joe Theismann spilled the beans about the name the Washington Commanders. And then Joe Theismann tried to lie and, you know, lie on DA, and that ain't right. So, you know, he spilled the beans. You know, he spilled the beans on Tuesday. And next thing you know, on Groundhog Day on that Wednesday, Washington Commanders came out. So, ain't his fault. D.A. was in the right. He asked some questions that, you know, about the team and, you know, what he thought. And then Joe Theismann just spilled out the beans. So, that ain't on D.A. That's on Joe Theismann. Should have kept his mouth shut. Or it could have said something like, well, uh, I really don't know the team name. And, you know, that's on him. So, Washington Commanders got a new name. I was kind of upset because I thought it was going to be the Washington Admirals. You know, me, I'm a Navy guy. And I really like the Navy format. You know, I love I love my Navy. You know, I am a Navy guy until the day I die. That's right. That's a rhyme. That's cool. Kind of cool. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I wish it, it could have been the Admirals. That would have been really, really cool. They would have had probably, you know, stars coming down and everything. You know, I don't know. But Washington Commanders is the uh, new nickname of the uh, Washington, replacing the name of the Washington football team, replacing the name of uh, you know, that other name that I will not ever say on this program or this podcast because, uh, you know, we don't do that. So, um, you know, Dan Snyder's in trouble again. He's, 
you know, he's got more allegations coming out. Uh, I don't understand why the hell he was uh, at the uh, thing when they told him that he is not involved, shouldn't be involved in the day-to-day -day operations. So, I don't know. That's the last thing I got to say about Dan Schneider and his dumbass. And, you know, you know what? I, I, I'm actually looking forward to the name, the Washington Commanders. And, yeah, I'm going to try to find a T-shirt or something. You know, I, I got... All kinds of jerseys that I collect in here. I just got me a brand new. Oh, man, this is so sweet. Because he's one of my favorite guys, favorite football players of all time. I got me a Larry Zonka jersey in the uh, Miami oh, teal sea. What do you call this? Sea, sea green? I don't know what they call this, but teal with 39 on it. You know, it represents the Black Goat 39 studios here. Oh, yeah, I did mention Black Goat 39 East. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. All right. Next thing I'm going to talk about is Tom Brady. But I'm going to take a break so I can enjoy a little bit of this coffee. And I might slip on my, my new Larry Zonka jersey. But uh, be right back. The Guru Talking Sports Podcast will be back in a few seconds. Stick with us. We'll talk to you in a bit. Hang loose. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back to the Guru Talk Sports Podcast. This is episode 98. And um, there's only a couple more things I want to talk about. Because uh, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, Tom Brady retired this week. And, you know, it, it, puts, a, it puts a void in me. Because... You know, I'm I'm just I'm 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 really I'm a really big Tom Brady fan. You know, I'm not not so much of what he did when he was with New England because he torched and terrorized uh, my Raiders and he torched and terrorized my Jaguars. If you remember the AFC uh, title game, I think it was the AFC title game back in 2017. Jaguars were. Saxonville, and they were ready to go, and next thing you know, they had Tom Brady's ass. Yeah, they did. Then next thing you know, here they come. Uh, New England came back and won that game. Jacksonville has never been the same since, you know, and then we got the tuck rule. Oh, the tuck rule. Yeah, we remember that. Torched and terrorized and Set my Raiders into a tailspin that they finally kind of got out of. <laughs> Jeez, you know Tom Brady. I, I, they, you know, I. You guys know the deal with Tom Brady. Y'all know the deal. I ain't got to explain anything, but you know what? I, I got to say this. One of the most respected, you know, even my, you know. New England fans aren't too happy with him right now. You know, some of the people will say, oh, he's a cheater, he's this, he's that, he's that. But, you know, you got to remember, you got to remember people for their greatness. You know, I look at it this way. When Kobe Bryant was playing, a lot of people didn't, you know, even, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this, even Caden Guru didn't really like Kobe Bryant at first. But you know, God rest his soul, and now that he's deceased, a lot of people, you know, turned a corner and said, hey, you know what, that was a great talent that we was watching. You know, you can go down the line with all these guys, Magic, Bird, Jordan, uh, Joe Montana, Wayne Gretzky. You know, you name any athlete that was great. You know, a lot of people didn't like these guys at first. You know, and, and you know, you know, LeBron, Dr. J. I mean, you got you got LeBron. LeBron right now. You know, hey, when I first. When he first came in the league, I didn't like LeBron's 
ass at all. I'm being real. And believe me, I, I'm, I'm a big, you know, I'm a big basketball fan. I'm a big sports fan. You guys know that. This is what I do. This is sports here. Why am I cracking the microphone if I didn't like sports? That's the thing. Anyway, you know, look at it this way. When Kareem retired, a lot of people didn't like Kareem, but yet, you know, they looked at him as he was great. Jordan, he was great. Gretzky, he was great. My man, uh, Joe Montana, he was great. John Elway, even he was great, you know? I look, you know, like I said, you got to remember when guys retire and you don't get a chance to see them anymore, you miss that. You know, like this is like now. I'm, 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 I'm putting it back into this perspective of now, right now, I'm watching LeBron and I like what he's doing. He, you know, he's, you know, not, I don't like the, the fact that he's, you know, basically running the damn Lakers and being a GM and everything, all that crap. But I like watching great players in their prime and when they are on the field of play. When they retire, you lose that. You say to yourself, wow. I wish I could have seen him more of him. You know, people years ago, I'm going to say, you know, back in the 1900s or whatever. Let's say early back in, let's take this example for for a minute. Well, you know, work with me here. Just listen to me here. Check this out. All right. Back in, let's say, like the 1900s, when there was baseball, when that sport did matter. You know, um, I ain't even really going to talk about baseball. I think I might end it with this this fact. But anyway, when baseball was around, you know, there were players. You know, there were players. But when Babe Ruth came up on the scene, he was larger than life. And he was a great player. Now, just imagine when these people back in the like early 1900s, 1900s or so. Well, let's say back until about like maybe 1950 or something like that. Babe Ruth passed away in like 1948 or so. When he retired, that generation of people said, wow, there was nothing like this guy, Babe Ruth. We have just witnessed one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Years down the road in baseball, there was Hank Aaron. When Hank Aaron played, a lot of people, when he retired and he moved on out of the spotlight, people say, yeah, I remember when Hank Aaron played. That guy was amazing. That guy was something else. When Babe Ruth played, we, you know, probably go to our grandparents or, you know, great-grandparents, you know, hopefully that you still have them around. I don't, you know, and then you say to yourself, what was Babe Ruth like? What was Hank Aaron like? Now, for this generation right here now, when in 2022, you know, Kaden Guru and Dante Guru can say the same thing. They said, they can say to their children and grandchildren, yeah, this was no, we witnessed the greatest football player of all time. We saw Tom Brady when he played. Put it in that perspective of how greatness is. That's why I say to myself and I say to others, you got to look at these players when they're great saying, wow, what are you going to pass along to your grandchildren? What are you going to pass along to your 
great grandchildren when they come up and they ask the questions, well, who is Tom Brady? Who is Hank Aaron? Who is Babe Ruth? Who is Joe DiMaggio? Who is Wayne Gretzky? Who is Magic Johnson? Who is Kobe Bryant? Who is uh, LeBron? Who is these, you know, who were these people? You have some kind of reference to point back to them and say, hey, look, these, I remember these players when they were great on the field of play. If you can understand what I'm, where I'm coming from. Now, like I, I told you, I got, I got pictures up here of Vince Lombardi. I got pictures up here of John Wayne. I got pictures up here of uh, Muhammad Ali, Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron. You know, I like I said, I, you, you got to look at it this way. You got, you know, all these pictures and stuff are stuff that I can take Dante Guru by the hand and take Caden Guru by the hand and explain to them who they were, you know, and what they accomplished. Just like when my grandfather used to tell me stories about Jackie Robinson. Just like when my dad said, yeah, I remember Roberto Clemente, what he did to our Baltimore Orioles in the 71 series. I vaguely remember it because I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit from the, you know, old school or so. I remember a little bit of it. I remember some of these players. I remember watching Johnny Unitas when he was great. I remember watching a little bit of Roberto Clemente. I kind of remember the Super Bowl three with Joe Namath and his big mouth and his bold prediction and ended up beating the Baltimore Colts. I remember this stuff. You know, and I pass this stuff along to people and my kids and everybody that are sports fans and say, hey, you know what? I got a story because, yeah, I remember that. I remember these great players. Now, this is, you know, this is a point in history that You know, if you're live in this time frame, you can go back and say to your grandkids or your great grandkids, yeah, I remember Tom Brady for what he did. I remember him as the guy that won seven Super Bowls or the guy that, you know, was clutch in that Super Bowl against Atlanta. I know. Atlanta, I'm sorry, I have to mention this, 28 to 3, yeah. But, you know, that's the thing. you got to remember, you remember some of these things. You remember these things. And that's what Tom Brady will always be remembered for. As one of those bookmarkers in history that people can say, yeah, I remember watching him. I remember how great he was. I remember the seven Super Bowls he won. I remember the 61 with New England and then the one, you know, right down the, you know, right after he left, he won another one with Tampa Bay. You know, that is one of the things that I can always say that you know, I, I, you know, the time that I remember sports figures and sports players and everything is, uh, it's really good because, you know, it's just, it's, it makes it a point of, let's say like when I do have grandchildren, um, Dante and Caden ain't thinking about children anytime soon, but you know, when I do have grandchildren, or when they have grandchildren, they can pass that along and say, hey, look, you know what? Yeah, I remember Tom Brady. Um, I remember LeBron in Kata's point of view. I can remember LeBron. I can remember Tom Brady. I can remember Kobe Bryant. I can remember these guys that played. You know, I'm going to miss Tom Brady. 
not just because he's on my fantasy team, one of my fantasy teams right now, and I'm deciding that, you know, if he does come back and play, I will have him. Um, you know, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a selfish reason, but, you know, hey, you know, I, I want to win at fantasy, but I'm not going to do anything to cheat or anything like that. But, you know, that's the way it is. You got to look at it as a t- point in time in history where, you know, players, you remember them. And believe me, the accomplishments of Tom Brady is always going to be in, you know, in our minds. Always. You know, like I said, you know, a lot of people are going to say about he cheated, inflated balls, and, you know. Remember some of the good things about Tom Brady. You know, remember, you know, that... The, you know, the guy, you know, I, I listened to him talk and I listened to him when he was, uh, you know, on uh, the shop. And I listened to him in a few, you know, conversations that he had. He's a great, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. You know, and for me, I like people that can make an impact, you know, can make an impact, a positive impact. Uh, I don't deal with anybody that's negative. The hell with that. You know, I had some thoughts on baseball. I'm not even going to talk about baseball. I'm so disgusted with baseball right about now. Uh, I might come out with it in my next podcast, but I don't even want to talk about baseball. But I do want to pass along some, uh, I do have taps today. And I'm going to talk about Mr. Howard Hester and him. Now, Howard Hester was a, you know, a lot of people don't realize how great some people are once they pass away. You know, and I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, I got Howard Hessman in here because, uh, you know, he was, he was, I always, I always thought of him as being a very underrated actor and not really getting a lot of credit for what he really did. All right. I do have to play Taps Bugle. Taps Bugle is coming up. And like I said, respect for Mr. Howard Hester. Where is my Taps Bugle? Hold on a second, guys. I know. I'm still running the boards by myself. And I want you guys to know that, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm multitasking right now. Multitasking and I'm doing all everything. So, anyway, tabs will be right now. You guys say goodbye to Mr. Howard Hessman because uh, Dr. Johnny Fever from WKRP in Cincinnati. Um, much respect to him. He was. Uh, a great influence on on television, and um, I'm gonna run down some of the name, uh, some of the things of uh, that he did on television. But um, everybody knows Howard Hessman is Dr. Johnny Fever. Much respect to him. May he rest in peace. Like I said, if you hear in the background, that's my healer. All right. Now, I'm going to um, run a little clip of Mr. Howard Hessman as Dr. Johnny Fever on WKRP in Cincinnati. Check this out. that I 
I never particularly cared for, but I'm nevertheless forced to play here on WKRP. This is Dr. Johnny Fever, just doing my job, following the orders of Venus Flytrap. He's just doing Andy Travis' job, while Andy fills in for our sales manager, Herb Parlick, who's not doing his job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see, and WKRP in Cincinnati has been, uh, I've been trying to find it because I always liked the show. I thought it was a very interesting show. Um, Johnny Fever and, you know, like I said, Howard Hessman played him. Um, Les Nessman and, uh, man, Bailey Summers and, uh, Lonnie, An you know, all I'm naming characters and real people. Lonnie Anderson, uh, Gordon Jump, Gordon Jump was in that, and um, you know, um, that was that was a gr really really good show, underrated show, well, mind you, underrated show. All right, now I wanted to mention these are some of the television shows that he appeared in. And I want you guys, okay, now, I know the younger generation are going to say, oh, I don't remember that show. Listen, I got a few shows that he was in that you might remember, okay? Now, I got to give it up. I got to give I give it give it up for my, myself and research, the guru's research team, which is the guru. Anyway, here's some of the TV shows that he was on. Dragnet, Rhoda. My, one of my favorite shows of all time, Mannix, Sanford and Son, Family, Beretta, Quincy MD, The Rockford Files, Soap, as you all know, WKRP in Cincinnati, 9 to 5, One Day at a Time, The Practice, That 70s Show, Boston Legal, ER, Mike and Molly, Chicago Med, and fresh off the boat. I know the last three you probably remember because they're pretty recent shows. Um, some of the other ones are older classics. Sanford and Son, Rhoda, Dragnet, Beretta, Rockford Files, Soap. Remember Soap with uh, Billy Crystal? Yeah, he was on there. Kathleen Hellman, you know. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. All right, Cap, you know, the, the redhead. Redhead lady. She was pretty hot. She was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, I got to get out of here. But I do want to mention the particulars. I just wanted to say, hey, look, I know it's been, this show has been running over an hour. But I wanted to make sure that I got my points out there. I wanted to say something about uh, Brian Flores. And I definitely wanted to say something about uh, what I went through, you know, this past week. And I want, you know. I, I know I got a lot of stuff that I didn't get to, but I want you guys to remember, episode 99 is coming up next week on Super Bowl Sunday. I'm going to try to get Cousin Aaron back in here, Super Bowl Sunday, we're going to talk, and we're going to break down the Super Bowl, hopefully um, he'll be able to, if not, um I got a couple other people that I'm coming um, that will be in here in studio with me. Not actually not in the studio. Uh probably by via of uh Zoom or on the phone lines. And like I told you guys, um my phone number is 302-468-7239. 302-468-7239. I'm not gonna do a lot of shout outs. I'm just gonna um you know, rep, I'm going to do the particulars. I'm going to definitely uh, get to everybody that I can next week and make sure that everybody knows, you know, we appreciate them and let them know, you know, what we're thinking. I'm not going to make a Super Bowl prediction right now. That's going to come next weekend. Um, Cincinnati, I like Cincinnati. I like Los Angeles. I, I had a feeling that these two teams would meet in the Super Bowl. Um, I think I made predictions the last time I came on. I was right with my predictions. The guru's always right. But I want you guys to know that um, the big game next week, I will have a Super Bowl prediction. 
All right. Now, like I said, you can follow us on social media. Follow me on YouTube, The Guru of Sports Show. Uh, Guru's Daily Shorts on Facebook. The Guru OS 39 on IG. Uh, Guru's Daily Shorts at gmail.com is my Gmail handle. And I did get a, um, a, cu- a couple little things in the... Uh, in my inbox, my email saying uh, they wanted to promote the show or do something. I, I'll talk about that later. But um, like I did tell you guys, we're over 150 uh, uh, apps and we're, we're expanding. Uh, this thing is growing a little bit. And I want to make sure that you guys know that um, we appreciate your listenership and we appreciate uh, you tuning in. Okay. Um, Twitter, I'm on at Goat39. Goaty's at Black Goat39. Are you around, Goaty? There he is in the background doing nothing like he usually do. Um, we're probably going to fire his ass next week. We never know. All right. Spreak, Spreaker is the main vessel we come out of. We really appreciate you. Like I said, guys, if you find us on Spreaker, uh, Spotify, Podchasers, iTunes, iHeartRadio, find us everywhere. We're we're expanding. We're getting out there. Um, I got to give big props and shout out to the Mary Max Show on Grief. Um, my big sister in podcasting, I appreciate her really doing a great job with her podcast. I love her podcast. Very, very interesting stuff. You need to check it out. She's over 100 some odd uh, episodes. I'm catching up. I'm going to be at 99 next week. And next week, I wanted to mention also, hopefully we can get Cousin Aaron on. That'll be the last time he'll be on for this season, football season. And definitely he'll be back next season for football season. During that time, Guru's going to be doing a few things. He's going to be, you know, interviewing and doing all kinds of stuff, uh, bringing in people. And, you know, I'm definitely going to get a cigar person in here because we got to have to talk of cigars here. And cigars and sports and hip hop and all that other good stuff. Um, I got to give it up for uh, Mr. Jeff Duarte, editor chief, head honcho over at Cali Sports News. You got to pick up Cali Sports News and, and definitely check us out. We, um, you know, I'm still lax a days ago, and I'm, I'm I apologize to you, Jeff. I'm gonna do something pretty soon. Okay, my cousin Curtis and his grandson have a podcast called The Young GM. And I did mention that this is the Black Ghost Studios East. Um, I'm going to be talking with my cousin, and he's going to be opening up a Western version of the Black Ghost 39 Studios that if I'm out there, I can be able to broadcast this podcast from his house, and he can do the same thing. If he's here, comes East, he can podcast from here. So, um, the Young GM podcast is very interesting. My uh, my cousin and his grandson are doing the podcast. Check him out. He's got a lot of good information. He's been fired from uh, 31 different uh, GM spots, but he, <laughs> that's, a, that's his little inside joke. But, you know, we really, I really appreciate it. I love his episodes. He's a great kid. And my cousin, I'm I'm really proud of you guys, you know, picking up the mantle and doing podcasts. And I really appreciate you guys. If there's anything I need to do to help you guys out, I will. And like I said, my thing is I help people out. I give platforms. I get. I try to take platforms and push them out there to make them bigger, to help out people, to make sure that they get you know, my support, and I get behind them, and help them out, that's my thing, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't need credit for anything, I just need credit for nothing, I want to make sure that I help people out, that's my thing, all right, my hip-hop brothers, I really appreciate you, and my baseball insider, Mr. Dave May Jr., we're going to be talking baseball pretty soon, Um, baseball is in a very bad way, and I hope it doesn't affect uh, you, Mr. Dave May Jr., I hope it doesn't affect you. And I hope you can be able to still do your job and do what you have to do. 
All right, the crew is Caden Guru, executive producer and board op. He's not here like usual. Um, Ray Guru, um, I'm going to pick up the... Next week, I'm definitely going to pick up a conversation that me and Ray Guru had this week about baseball. It's pretty interesting, and you probably going to have to definitely uh, tune in and listen to that. Dante Guru, my backup co-host and show advisor and information guy, we appreciate you. Cousin Aaron's co-host, hope you're feeling better, Cousin Aaron. We hopefully will get you back next week. Um you know, for show number 90, or episode 99, we appreciate you, we love you, and hopefully you're doing better. Our motto is saying is this has been a Black Goat production for Black Goat Entertainment, uh, copyright 2022, all rights reserved. Our motto is we don't hate, we congratulate, and we create, and we don't steal from anybody, and we give everybody big props and uh, respect and shout outs as we can. And like I said, my rule of thumb is that we make sure that we give you the right information. We give you information that you can you know, use and need, and we love you for it, and we want to make sure that we do the right thing always, always for you guys. Like I said, I don't take any credit. I don't take no credit at all. I just love you guys, and I just really appreciate you tuning in and listening to me and my crazy ass cousin Aaron and his, you know, his thoughts and that stupid ass Goaty. <laughs> Sorry, Goaty. I had to say it. You are stupid. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna get out of here, but uh, you know, this is Black History Month. I am gonna be, you know, mentioning uh few things, but, you know, I want to make sure that, like I told you before, everything is equal. Everything has to be equal. You know, let's, let's try to do something on the positive side and let's try to do something that is going to be equal to all men, not just white and black people or just everybody, you know, just do, you know, when you go out there today, if you go out there today or tomorrow or something like that, Give a shout out to somebody. Say hi to somebody that you haven't even met before. Love somebody. Be good to somebody. You know, do the right thing. Make sure that people that are around, they, you know, you 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 know, you don't have, you know. Just be be nice to somebody. That's all I'm saying. You know, the world is, you know, excuse excuse the expression, the world's fucked up right now. Pray, do the right thing, and make sure that you got, you know, some kind of respect that you can give to someone, decency and all. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to play a song that I really like, and um, like I said, we're going to be back next week for episode 99. Guru Talking Sports Show. We'll be back next week. We love you. Take care of yourself. Guru, talk to you soon. Guru, we'll see you real soon. I'm out of here later. Listen to this song. I want you guys to check it out. Later. Later.